That's perhaps, so we have, a, we have a question here from the audience, which is when is your next mass market car going to be ready? Because your current one right. is uh, roughly what in price? Well, our current one is, in, in US dollars, it's about $70,000. So it is a premium car. Um, and then we, we're, we're coming out with uh, an SUV version um, called the X. Uh, that's coming out next year. But also, that's on the same platform, so it's about the same cost. Um, the, the car that we, we're lo really looking forward to bringing to market is called the, uh, the Model 3. Um, and that's intended to be a mass market, long range electric vehicle. It's the car that um, I, I wanted to bring out from the very beginning, but it just takes a bit of time to iterate the technology and compute. How long? Because I think uh, the launch yeah. date has been pushed back and back a bit, eh? Well, it's, uh, we're hoping for about uh, two and a half to three years. Um, Contingent upon that is completion of this very big battery factory called the Gigafactory that we're building. So tell us about that. Sure. So the, in order to make a lot of electric cars, you need a lot of batteries. And um, the, the, the lithium-ion lithium -ion battery capacity of the world, in terms of production capacity, is really not uh, big enough yet. Uh, nor does it make the most advanced type of uh, batteries that, that we really need for long-range electric cars. So in order to solve that problem, we found there was really no choice but to build a really enormous factory um, called the Gigafactory. Uh, so named because we're targeting about uh, 50 gigawatt hours of output, which for battery energy storage is quite a big it's number. It's huge, yeah. yeah. And it sounds cool as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the so, so are there any links, do you think, between the battery technology that you're investing in at the moment and renewables? I mean, would there be... Yes, yeah, absolutely, so absolutely. The stuff that you're developing is not just for cars? Can Correct. Some, yeah, okay. In, in fact... Tell uh, us a bit more about that. Sure, so uh, uh, about a third of the output of the, the Gigafactory is intended as stationary storage, uh, primarily to be paired with renewables, but also to do grid buffering in non-renewable situations um, so that you can operate the plants, uh, even if it's a hydrocarbon, uh, energy plant, you can operate it close to its optimum and avoid having to sort of peak. Um, the, yeah, so I, I think we'll see really a very huge demand for stationary storage. Um, and this, this is really going to help out some of the more intermittent sources like wind uh, and solar. Um, and, um, you know, it's worth noting, I'm not sure if people are aware of this, but it, 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 the world could be powered many times over by solar if you had enough uh, battery capacity to pair it with it. M many times, like... The world? I mean, obviously California, where you're no. based, but in Europe? Times Can you really say that in Europe? A thousand. <laughs> it's literally true. The, the amount of energy that, that reaches the Earth from the sun is staggeringly high. We have this enormous fusion generator in the sky uh, that, that is lobbing out vast amounts of energy. And I'm, I'm talking about just using land area. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. In fact, here's a little tidbit. Um, if you take a nuclear plant and you took its current output and compared that to just taking solar panels and putting solar panels on the, la on the area used by the nuclear power plant, because these typically have a big keep out zone, you know, of about maybe five kilometers or there, thereabouts, it, we're, we're building houses, you know, and, and dense, uh, you know, any kind of dense office or, or housing space, usually people don't want to do that near a nu nuclear power plant. <laughs> um, uh, so th there's, there's quite a big keep out zone. And when you factor the keep out zone into, into account, um, the solar panels put on that area would typically generate more power than the nuclear power plant. Yes, and that's not a calculation just done by you. I know, you can just, it's very easy to do. <laughs> uh, it's, it, so, um, uh, so here's a question uh, from give the audience basic, then. If I, if I might, might sort of just do just a tidbit of math. Uh, the <laughs> Collective maths, <laughs> 900 people, <laughs> mental <Tidbit>. maths. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, w one square kilometer is a million square meters. Uh -huh. um, and there's one kilowatt per square meter of solar energy. So, on one square kilometer, there is a gigawatt of solar energy. Uh-huh. With okay. you so far. <laughs> With you so far. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, I mean, if, if you wanted, I mean, you, you, you can get... And ergo, the nuclear power station doesn't give you the same. Is that the calculation? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Okay, so here, yes. um, but, but like you could power the entire United States um, uh, with about, let's say, 150 to 200 square kilometers of solar panels. The entire United States. Take a corner of Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Not much going on there. I've been there. 